This presentation will focus on the relationship between sport and the mass media. And in particular, we'll look at the representation of sport in the media and the economic considerations of media coverage and sport. And we'll look critically at the impact of the mass media by looking at who benefits, how does the media influence our understanding of sport, and how have sport changed to suit the needs of the media. So to begin with, we can define mass media as communication that is directed from one source to a large percentage or proportion of the population, and it includes television, movies, radio online, and newspapers and magazines. If you turn to the back pages and sometimes the front pages of the current newspapers, you'll notice that sport does feature quite prominently. And depending on where you are in Australia, certain sports might dominate. You'll notice that there are plenty of sensational headlines in newspapers, and these headlines do influence our understanding of sport. And they can shape how we feel about sport, how connected we are to sport. And the relationship between sport and the media is what we call interdependent. So it means that both depend on one another. So sport needs the media and the media needs sport. So sport needs the media because it helps to broadcast the events to a large proportion of the people and it gains exposure through that. Supporters and fans benefit from this. And the networks need sport because sport is popular. People like to watch sport. So when people tune in to watch sport on television, lots of viewers means lots of advertising revenue for the TV networks. So the relationship is interdependent. Both sport benefits through the exposure that it gains and the media benefits because sport is popular and it is able to draw in lots of viewers to their network, which means advertisers will want to associate their products with that particular network. And so we've heard a lot about the TV rights deals that both the major codes have secured over the years and how important they are to the sport. So sports like the NRL and the AFL have very large TV rights deals, um, certainly between 350 million and 400 million per year. And both of these sports benefit from this large amount of money that flows into their organizations to be able to pay players and maintain the level of professionalism to run the sport and be successful. And this can mean that the media gains more and more control of sport and it means that they can then have a say in how sport is broadcast and sometimes sport can change to suit the needs of the media. And we've seen positives and negatives to this but in some cases we might see loss of traditions and just changes to the way sports are operated. For example, uh, scheduled ad breaks in large sporting events these days is seen as quite a normal procedure or process now. Uh, the media obviously is paying a lot of money to broadcast the sport, lots of exposure for the sport into the community, but the media companies obviously want to increase their advertising revenue. So more ad breaks so that they can gain more advertising revenue is something that fans need to put up with. In terms of the representation of sport in the media, it's important to understand that how sport is represented in the media today, whether it's print media or the TV or online, it usually reflects society's values. So if society values sport that is male-dominated and perhaps contact sport, then media will obviously uh, show more of this to the audience. Often metaphors are used to describe sport, and this can be used to uh, try to draw the viewer in and make things more interesting. The media tends to favour male-dominated sport, unfortunately, uh, and this is something that has changed a little over time, but we're still seeing far more male-dominated sports in the media today. And contact sports tend to be very popular and our culture tends to gravitate towards sports that involve power, aggression 
and they're usually male dominated. And traditional sports tend to receive more coverage than non-traditional sports. So sports that link with Australia's origins like cricket, uh, rugby and AFL and rugby union, they link back with our British origins and they tend to receive more coverage as they are traditional. Sport is represented in the media in different ways and you'll see different television stations represent sport in different ways. For example, when you look at the variety shows that present sport on different channels. The ABC's Offsiders program, which is broadcast on a Sunday morning, tends to present a more analytical, focused and serious discussion about sport, whereas Sport Sunday on Channel 9 tends to be more of a variety show format with fast-moving interviews and humour to try to engage the audience. So different television stations with a different way of presenting or representing sport. We see the same with newspapers in Australia showcasing sport to match their social audience. And you can see that we've got broadsheets and tabloid newspapers in Australia. And of course, the tabloid newspapers uh, tend to be a little bit less formal in their delivery, a lot more images and large striking headlines with the broadsheet, a larger newspaper with a lot more business information inside, tend to depict sport in a more formal sense. And the owners of newspapers certainly have the power to control the nature of newspaper content. In New South Wales, we have the Daily Telegraph, which is owned by News Corporation, and the Sydney Morning Herald, which is owned by Nine Entertainment Co. And, and both of those companies do have I guess, a vested interest in promoting certain sports that they might be aligned with. So, for instance, News Corp once had a close association with the National Rugby League as a co-owner of the game, and so a lot of their coverage was focused on promoting the National Rugby League. And now today we've got Nine Entertainment Co. having quite a stake in the Sydney Morning Herald. So this means that with Channel 9 having a broadcast deal with Channel with uh, rugby league, then we see lots of coverage for rugby league in that paper as well. So it's important to note that the owners of these newspapers do have the power to really promote certain sports should they want to or wish to. And we also see magazines as well, probably less popular than newspapers because they are a little bit more expensive to purchase but they do come with a lot more detailed information and coverage of many sports as opposed to just some sports dominating, as you see in the newspapers. And sport and television have a strong association going back to the 70s and 80s when television really became a vehicle to promote sport. Sport and television go hand in hand today as well. With pay TV, viewers have the opportunity to get really in-depth analysis of sport. They get the opportunity to, to see a range of different sports on television through live sport and also through sports analysis and commentary. And we've also seen online platforms emerge to make sport even more accessible as technology has become more uh, important in people's lives. And you, you'll see in, in addition to KO that lots of sports have their own online platforms as well. So all of the newspapers, uh, the TV stations have their own online platforms to connect with people who want to learn more about sport. And a good example here of coverage is through the Olympics. And the Olympics, through its coverage, has exposed more people to a range of different sports. Every four years it comes around, it's such a big event and the coverage reaches so many people and can inspire people to participate.